Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to see how we can quickly analyze, clean and manipulate the data using MitoSheet. Now, this MitoSheet is an amazing library, guys. You'll be able to do very amazing things with respect to EDA, like exploratory data analysis and automated Python generation code. This entire video is basically done by Jake, who is from Mito itself. So please make sure that you watch this video till the end, because as you all know that the first module in the life cycle of a data science project is EDA, right? Apart from that, it also helps you to generate the Python code automatically. So definitely it is a win-win situation. So definitely have a look onto this and watch the video till the end. So let's proceed. Hey, this is Jake from Mito. I'm gonna give you a quick demo of how you can analyze uh, clean and manipulate your data, do some exploratory data analysis as well using Mito. If you don't know, Mito is a spreadsheet interface for Python. All you need to do is call in this interface and everything you do in this interface here is gonna generate the equivalent Python in the code cell below. What I've done so far is just import this avocado data set. And when I did that, it automatically took this CSV avocado file and turned it into a data frame for me. It wrote this code for me. I didn't have to write this code or any of the code you're gonna see myself. Um, all I have to do is just interact in this interface here. To get data into the sheet, all we have to do is first call the sheet. So you can import the MitoSheet package, then call MitoSheet.sheet, which calls this interface here. Uh, and once I've done that, I can import data one of two ways. So one, I can pass in a data frame that I'm already working with as an argument here, and then we'll see that data populate the sheet. Or I can go to the import modal, search my local files, click the file I want, and see that data imported. Um, here, we've imported a data set. And we see one thing we noticed is that the CSV file we had, it had an index column already. And we automatically, automatically have an index in Mito. So I can delete this column just by clicking delete. There we go. And now I see my data. So we have these dates and we have this information about these avocados that we're dealing with, these different dates. So I want to look at this date by month. So we have these different months here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a column and then just really easily use this month function, selecting this data, and we see it will retrieve the month from each of these, uh, from each of these entries here in the date column. Uh, and so now that we've done that, we have this new column here. I think I wanna rename it just to make it a little simpler. I'm gonna recall it month here. We see it updates and renames that column month. And those two operations we just did, that code is generated below here. So it automatically generates the code for us that we can use carried forward in our analysis or to automate a process or whatever we wanna do with it. Um, now that I have these months, let's say I wanna look at um, the frequencies I have for the different months. There's two ways I can do this, two ways I can visualize this. So I can select this column here and for any column we select by clicking on this button here, I have three menus here. So I can apply filters to that column. Uh, so we have, uh, have 18,000 entries here. I can apply a filter. Let's say I just want the month of October, so that would be 10. We get that. Um, we see now there's only 1,500, so we can see how many entries from October we have. And again, when we apply that filter, we get the equivalent code for that as well. I'm going to take off this filter really quickly, though. Um, we can also look at the values here. So this is going to show us the different unique values we have in the column. Obviously, here it's 1 through 12 and how many of those unique values we have for each of them and what percentage of the total amount of values that is. So a really great way to see our values. We also get the summary stats here. We can sort of visualize this breakdown here. We'll show you another visualization in a little bit. We get the mean, standard deviation, uh, the quartiles, max, how many null values we have here, it's zero, and lots of other good values as well. And we get that for all the columns in our data set. All you do is just click the button here. Um, I can also apply a pivot table to look at this data if I want to look at the counts of how many I have for each month. So I'll click our pivot button here. This creates a new data frame that we're creating with the pivot table here. And we have the option to delete, duplicate, or rename any of these data frames that we have. So different data frames appear as different sheets down here. As my row, I'm gonna put month, and then I'm gonna actually just do a simple value count of month here and we see for each month how many values we have so for one we have one nine four four etc etc and i can put a sort on any of these columns as well by going here and so i can put this in actually i want this in descending order and so we can see one which is january has the most most uh, March is the second most, et cetera, et cetera. And June has the least amount of values. I can also visualize this data as well using our graphing here. Actually, and when I apply that sort, you'll see the uh, the code for it right there, as well as the code for the pivot table down here. Um, and so now let's apply a graph. We can show you some of our visualizations. So I want to look at 
Uh, the graph I'm going to make is from DF2. The chart type, we can do bar chart, box, histogram, or scatter plot. Let's do a bar chart here as my x axis. I want the month, and very simply, as my y axis, I want month count. And we'll see this chart here a little bit uh, more detailed than we had in the summary statistics box. And we can look at this data, we can hover over to see the values, we can zoom in on specific values as well. And if I want to copy the code from this visualization, and this is a really important feature because a lot of people when they're getting into Python, and even when they're really advanced with Python, getting the code right for visualizations can take a lot of time. So with this feature here, you can just generate your, your visualization really simply with this menu here, and then copy the code. And we can paste it here, and we have the code for this visualization. In fact, if I run this, if I run this cell, and then I were to run this cell, we would get our visualization right here. So you can use these visualizations carried forward in your analysis. So let me close this and let's go back to our base data set. So other operations we can do, as I said, add and delete columns. We can export this as a CSV. We can undo and redo steps. We also provide a step history here so you can see all the steps you've taken in your analysis. And again, all those steps are reflected in the code that is auto commented. And I'll close this. Uh, one other feature just to show you here is that we do have merging functionality. So if I did want to join these two columns together, I could do that. Uh, I can decide what type of merge I want to do. Or sorry, not two columns, these two data sets together. I could do a lookup, a left join, a right join, an inner join, or an outer join. We can decide what the merge key is going to be, what columns we want to keep in the merge, etc. And that would, as we see in DF3 here, generate the equivalent code there. Uh, maybe that's the last thing is we actually do have a full screen mode. So if you click that button, you'll see the Mito sheet populate full screen and it will uh, still generate code. So Mito is a really powerful tool for generating Python in this visual manner. You don't have to leave your code. You're not sacrificing code at all. You still get all the same code, all the same usable auto-documented code, but you get to do it in the visual environment. So you don't have to go to Stack Overflow or Google to look up syntax all the time. It's a really fast way to get your analysis done, because that's what's important after all, is finishing your analysis and having um, some good work done. So I hope you check out Mito. Again, here's the install instructions and uh, the full documentation. And yeah, hope you enjoy. Thank you.